You've created the stored procedure, you've executed the stored procedure, but sometimes you want to modify the stored procedure. Here's how it's done. Let me show you how to change a stored procedure that you've already created. One of the easy ways to do it with Nexus versus actually on the SQL Server system is to just right click on the stored procedure and do a view DDL. I've done that. Now, I'm going to take and copy that and instead of the word create, I'll put the word alter. Now I can make any change I want and here I'm going to add a second sort key, a minor sort key of grade point descending. When I execute this, this overlays the previous sort procedure. It has been altered and that's how you make that change. When I execute this, it's going to then reflect the new stored procedure. And there we go. This is now sorted by class code first and on all ties, grade point descending. Once you've created and run the stored procedure, you're ready to go because you can modify it. But sometimes you just got to drop a bad habit or a bad stored procedure. Here's how it's done. Here's how you drop a stored procedure. It's this simple. Just type in drop procedure and the procedure name. I also gave it the schema name as well. It's gone. We have dropped that stored procedure. It is no longer there. Let me show you this. We're going to execute this and it's going to say, uh-uh. It can't be found. What are you talking about? It's no longer there. So if you want to drop a stored procedure, just drop procedure, procedure name, done. Sometimes you're going to want to check out a stored procedure to see what's in it. There are multiple ways to do that. Here's how that's done. I'm going to now recreate the stored procedure that I just dropped. And it's been created. I'll execute it just to show you. Then I'm going to show you two different SQL statements that you can write against a SQL Server system that will show you the definition of your stored procedure. So we've now created this. The first is to execute SP help text and give it the name. There it is. And I can see the definition right here. That's the create statement. This is the second way I can do this. I can select definition from sys.sql modules where the object ID dbo.liststudents. This isn't quite as clean. You might have to do a little bit of manipulation here as you can see. That shows me the same way. Those are the two ways you can use SQL Server to actually go out there and look at the DDL of a stored procedure. This lesson is brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. The Nexus Query Chameleon, a query tool looking to help your data adapt to any surroundings.